everyone, welcome back to Sugar Mama TV. I am financial planner Canna Campbell. No matter where you are in the world, I'm here to help you achieve your financial goals, no matter how big or how small, and to help you realize how powerful you really are when it comes to reducing the financial stress in your life and creating realistic long term financial freedom and independence for yourself. All right, today I want to talk about how to be happy and frugal at the same time. So often we think being frugal is about being mean, depriving ourselves, going on this like strict financial diet where you can't do anything, you can't spend anything. And really that's not the case. And to be really honest with you guys, even though people probably assume I'm a really frugal person, I would actually say that I'm actually probably more mindful with money when it, than it actually frugal. I like to spend money, but I like to do it in a mindful way. So I get, I guess, the maximum return on my investment. However, I have recently finished my financial challenge, which I do every single year, and I put on my Instagram account, and that is Frugal February. Now, during this month of being mindful with money and really trying to hone in and, and I guess almost recalibrate my living expenses, I actually managed to save out of my monthly budget $760, which is a huge amount of money. And of course, that has all gone towards my own financial goals, which is the $1,000 project, which is not only a growing share portfolio, but more importantly, a growing passive income stream that is going to contribute to my own financial goal, which is long-term financial freedom and independence through a dividend income stream that exceeds my living expenses. Now, these are the top tips that I came up with in getting through Frugal February, because normally I don't really enjoy Frugal February. I find it really frustrating, but this time I did things differently and I loved it and I embraced it and I found it really enriching because it gave me so much more clarity and purpose in my life. So here are my top tips. Number one, have a goal. It is so important that you have a meaningful, powerful, exciting, liberating financial goal behind being frugal. There is no point just being frugal because just you want to be mean with money. You need to have something that gives you excitement. Once you, you want to jump out of bed and you don't mind going without because you know the value or the abundance is going to flow into you by you know being more mindful with your money. So that might be something really small, like you know having the goal to finally pay off the toxic debt in your life, or it might be something really exciting, like having a goal to save up the deposit on your first home. Whatever it is, make sure you invest some time really exploring and creating a personal financial goal for you that makes you want to embrace life and give this goal the best shot of being achieved. Tip number two, and this is probably the most important tip in this particular video, and that is your mindset and your attitude. So often we associate the word frugal with going without, being scarce, being mean, saying no to everything, and that's not the case at all when you adjust your mindset and your attitude in the right way. See, when you do this, you actually realize you're creating so much more value in your life. You're creating more efficiency you're creating more options, you're creating flexibility, you're creating more choices and more time. And these are all things that actually are luxuries in our life because we can you know, pick and choose what we want. But it also gives us so much more energy in life because we're just mindfully and selectively choosing what we want to have in our life, what keeps with us, what reflects our value system. So adjust that mindset and attitude when it comes to being frugal. It's not about being mean, it's about adding more, adding more space for greatness to flow into your life. Tip number three, and this was really helpful for times where I got frustrated by Frugal February, and that is little luxuries go a really long way. So there were days on the weekends where I would normally maybe go and grab some lunch or go out to breakfast with friends, but instead I went and bought fresh hot croissants from my local bakery, put them in the oven to make them a little bit warmer. I got like strawberry jam and butter and ate them with my family. And it was a fraction of the price of sitting in a cafe or a restaurant and I got to do it in the privacy of my own home. And there was something really luxurious about this. Also simple things like making yourself coffee and enjoying it in bed or even breakfast in bed. Little luxuries can go a really long way. Perhaps you don't go and buy a whole new outfit, but you buy yourself a beautiful, luxurious new lipstick or a beautiful new nail polish. Think about the little luxuries that really add a lot of value into your life, but don't necessarily break the bank. Tip number four is creativity. I used to always think Frugal February was about being super organized, like with military precision. And then I realized there were days where I just didn't have time to be organized. 
And so I had to get creative, you know, running out the door and not packing my lunch the night before. So I would think about what have I got in my fridge and just grab it. Even if it was like half a tub of yogurt, I'd grab it with some fresh fruit and some granola or nuts and just throw all things together. And it ended up being a really nutritious and healthy meal. So think creatively. It's not about being super organized. However, of course, that does definitely help. But get creative in ways that you can save money. Perhaps you can borrow a dress from a friend instead of buying a new one, or even rent a new dress instead of buying one. Perhaps you can drive instead of getting a cab or an Uber. Start thinking outside of the square as to how and where you can save money and do it from a creative perspective because this then really opens up the spectrum of all the different ways you can actually save money. Tip number five, and that is compromise. You don't have to be frugal 24 seven. You're allowed compromises, that's perfectly fine. There were days where I would allow myself to buy a snack, such as some banana bread or a muffin, because I actually took my lunch to work that day. The overall effect was I still saved like $15, even though I spent a $5, you know, $5 on a snack or a muffin. It's okay. It's not about bling, black or white. You just need to have balance in there and be realistic. You always want to come from a place of kindness when it comes to compromise. Tip number six, and this is about letting go. This is particularly directed towards people who are always trying to be aggressively frugal. We need to be kind to ourselves and we also need to be honest and real with ourselves. Life happens, things that are out of our control. So it's incredibly important that you learn to ride with all the waves that come with life. That might be something like a parking fine or an unexpected dental bill or an unexpected trip that you need to take or additional course that you need to take to further your education. Don't get angry, don't get annoyed. You need to learn to adjust with it, roll with it. Because if you don't, you're just gonna be frustrated. It's gonna deplete your energy sources. And that's energy that's really valuable that could go into creating goodness in your life. So it's really important that you don't look at being frugal in a controlling, aggressive way. As a, you look at being frugal as a way of always learning and growing, and most importantly, being mindful with your money. And then the seventh tip for being frugal and happy, and it's to remember that being frugal is not for life. Okay, right now you might be working on a really exciting goal and you have to be frugal and that's perfectly fine. But please always remember, you don't always have to be frugal. For me personally, I treat being frugal as special periods in my life for like sprints or for bursts in my life. When I have a particular goal that I'm working towards and I will use the qualities or the, the skill set of being frugal to help me achieve that goal as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Once I've achieved that goal, I have the reward, I let things go a little bit, you know, enjoy living life to the maximum, obviously always still being mindful and responsible. And then when I'm ready, I pick back up being frugal to help me work on my next goal, the next evolution of that goal where I'll maybe save more or invest more or, you know, pay off more of my home loan or put more into my superannuation. It's really important that you're not always wasting your energy being permanently frugal. All right, everyone, I really hope that this motivates you and inspires you to use the qualities of mindfulness and frugality when it suits you, when you've got that exciting goal and when you need to. And I have to say by doing Frugal February every single year, as much as at times I dread it, I find that it really recalibrates me. It gives me a greater understanding of the way that I use money, save money, you know, invest money, build wealth. But it also lets me have a good, long, hard look at what I really value. And I definitely think doing a financial challenge like Frugal February is a fantastic way to give yourself a sense of purpose, clarity and direction and a deeper understanding as to your value system, which all add to your overall sense of wealth and happiness. All right, everyone, don't forget to make sure you're following me on my Instagram account at TV, And of course, if you want to see inside my normal life, at Canna Campbell Official. All right, everyone, make sure you're subscribed and I will see you next Thursday for more Sugar Mama TV. Ciao for now.